was verified that all four of the uh, general purpose computers on board were communicating properly with the backup computer. This was one of the, the problems, this was the problem, which stopped the countdown on Friday morning when we were trying to have our first launch of the space shuttle. It was determined at that time uh, and after that we were not having a uh, successful communication between the computers. It was suspected originally that it was the backup computer uh, that was having the problem. And then after many hours of work by uh, 50 to 100 uh, computer experts uh, here and at Houston, it was determined that there was a timing skew or a timing problem between two of the four uh, primary computers and the backup computer. The two computers simply tried to talk about 40 milliseconds, 40 thousandths of a second too early to the backup computer, and it said uh, that's not the right time to do that, and it hung up the phone. Uh, however, the, uh, in the meantime, we have gotten the, the computers restarted, uh, properly timed, and they have been running uh, ever since that point, and they will continue to run uh, throughout the mission. At no time would more than two computers be shut down, and the uh, computer experts determined that that particular problem uh, never occurs once the computers are up and running and timed properly, uh, unless they are all shut down and then restarted, and only rarely uh, does that problem appear then. But as it is, everything going along very smoothly as we come up on the T minus 15 minute point in the countdown. T minus 15 minutes mark. This is shuttle launch control. And uh, be off market. Transmitting AB on. And market A off. And be off. Okay, STD, that's 100%. Okay, copy. Double OS, how you doing? We're in work. Thanks a lot for program, don't see? Okay. Bill Sells, how you doing on your purge? Doing okay. I mean, no last time. Be about 30 seconds. All right. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 11 minutes, 45 seconds, and counting. Everything going very smoothly in the countdown at this point. The booster test conductor ordered the gaseous nitrogen purge of the solid rocket booster aft skirts to begin. The Chase aircraft presently at Patrick Air Force Base have been ordered to start their engines, and a check with all the test support team members has verified that they are go for launch. Uh, the main propulsion helium subsystem cockpit switches have been configured for launch, and the helium tank isolation valves are open. In just a few seconds, another check of the abort advisory system will be conducted. This is a uh, visual signal that would go to the astronauts uh, if it were necessary for them to abort. We're getting within a couple of minutes now of the final build-in hold that comes at the T-minus nine-minute point in the countdown and lasts for a duration of 10 minutes. One of the first things that will happen in that uh, particular hold will be the retraction of the Gox vent arm or beanie cap uh, out of the way. That has uh, been up on top of the external tank. Uh, it has warm uh, gaseous nitrogen, which is used to prevent any buildup of ice uh, from the venting of the liquid oxygen tank. At the uh, present time, we're at T-minus 10 minutes, 23 seconds, and counting. This is shuttle launch control. SCP and EPD, how you doing? To about uh, 270 amps. Okay. Stand by 30 seconds.
This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 9 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. Just a few seconds away now from our final build-in hold at the T-minus 9 minute point in our countdown. Managers are being polled uh, to determine if we are ready to uh, go ahead. Uh, we've had confirmation from DOD support that contingency support aircraft and personnel are on station and ready to support the launch. About five seconds away now from that final nine minute build in hold. We're at T minus nine minutes and holding. This is the final 10 minute build in hold. All personnel in the firing room have been asked to remain seated, and no smoking rule has gone into effect through the launch. We have had a uh, report from the orbiter test conductor or to the orbiter test conductor that they are go for launch. At the present time, we know of no major problems as we enter this final 10 minute build in hold. One of the first events which will occur during this hold will be the retraction of the Gox Ben Arm, and we are waiting for uh, the command to do that at the present time. T minus nine minute and holding. This is shuttle launch control. Stand by, 30 seconds. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus nine minutes and holding. The Gox vent arm or beanie cap has just been retracted and will be moved to the side momentarily. Uh, at that point, uh, we'll have uh, several important milestones still remaining uh, in the, the countdown. When we come out of the, uh, the count or come out of the hold and begin the count once again, the ground launch sequencer will take over command of the remaining events as well as monitoring the shuttle system's response. At T minus seven minutes, the orbiter access arm will retract. At T minus five minutes, the auxiliary power units will be started. At T minus four minutes, a purge of the main engines will start. And at T minus two minutes and 55 seconds, liquid oxygen pressurization will begin at 1 minute and 57 seconds, liquid hydrogen pressurization, uh, pre pressurization will start. And at T minus 28 seconds, the redundant set sequencer will take over. At that point, events happen far too quickly, and readings of systems must be done too fast for humans to perform. At the present time, we're waiting for uh, NASA test director George Page, our launch director, uh, to uh, uh, say a few words uh, to the crew about the procedures which will be followed. The, the gaseous oxygen vent arm, uh, the cap has been uh, retracted, and the arm is uh, just about to move away from uh, the external tank. At the present time, everything going very, very smoothly. The gaseous oxygen vent arm now is moving back to the retract position, getting it out of the way so that the orbiter can lift off uh, at the and clear the tower properly. The launch director coming up to speak to the crew. Launch director is uh, talking to his team about the launch commit criteria at the present time. The 
launch director is going through the uh, the commit criteria with the launch team and he is telling them that if they see something that would require that uh, we cut off that that is the thing to do that we're not going to be taking any chances uh, everybody will be talking on the same channel on what our channel 212 Shuttle Please Launch visit. Control, our launch director, George Page, reading a, um, pre a message from President Reagan to the Columbia crew, which began, you go forward this morning in a daring enterprise, and you take the hopes and prayers of all Americans with you. Uh, launch director George Page added his uh, best wishes. He said, we wish you an awful lot of luck and that we are with you 1,000% on the trip. We are just about to come out of this uh, T-minus nine-minute hold uh, in just about two minutes from now. We are having a check of the managers who are monitoring uh, this morning's launch, and uh, all of them who have been polled so far said that they are ready to go. Uh, we'll be ready to pick up in just uh, about a minute and a half from now. This is Shuttle Launch Control. Stand by 30 seconds. This is shuttle launch control at T minus nine minutes and holding. We are approximately 26 seconds away from picking up the countdown at the T minus nine minute point. Nine minutes remaining between now and 7 a.m. 
when we expect to have a liftoff of America's first space shuttle. Uh, the launch team has been briefed on the way in which a halt can be called to the countdown. During the final nine minutes of the uh, countdown, and we're coming out, we're at T-minus nine minutes and counting. The launch events are being controlled by the ground launch sequencer now that has been initiated and that will be in control up to T minus 25 seconds when they switch to the onboard redundant set launch sequencer. The ground launch sequencer is a part of the launch processing system and operates by relaying commands to the orbiter's onboard computers which then report back to the launch processing system that the commands have been executed. The primary job of the computers is to check that all of the launch commit criteria, such as propellant loads, temperatures, pressures, and other measurements are satisfactory. The primary chase aircraft have taken off. Uh, a third T-38 will take off at the T-minus five minute mark. The timing of this plane uh, is such a tight window that a 15 second delay would mean that they would not be in the proper position at launch. The sleek T-38 supersonic trainers have such critical timing because of the small fuel load that they carry. T-minus seven minutes, 52 seconds, and counting. Uh, approximately 40 seconds away from movement of the orbiter access arm. Uh, this is the final arm, which must be moved out of the way to provide for the orbiter uh, to clear the tower properly. Uh, this may be a very uh, interesting launch to watch from the standpoint that the orbiter is able to translate uh, slightly horizontally as it begins to lift off, and it also does a roll maneuver uh, which will uh, place it, uh, the orbiter sort of on its back as it goes uh, towards the uh, proper inclination to the equator. T minus seven minutes, seven seconds and counting. T minus seven minutes and counting. And we have retraction of the orbiter access arm, beginning to move back first uh, away from the orbiter and then to swing away. This was the walkway attached to the service structure and used by the crew to walk to the orbiter. The crew has been advised uh, to lower their helmet visors. Very slow movement by the orbiter access arm. T minus six minutes, 29 seconds and counting. The crew is beginning the APU pre-start. Uh, this, the start begins at the five minute point in the countdown. T minus six minutes, 15 seconds and counting. The APUs are turbine devices fueled by hydrazine, which provides hydraulic power to change the angle of the engines and the flight surfaces on the orbiter. T minus five minutes, 59 seconds and counting. Pilot uh, Bob Crippen had begun that APU pre-start, which uh, started about 48 seconds from now. The development flight instrumentation, which measures the stresses on the orbiter during flight, have been turned on and recorders uh, uh, store information for playback after landing. T minus five minutes, 30 seconds, mark and counting. Pilot Bob Crippen has signified the auxiliary power units are ready to be started. T minus five minutes, 15 seconds and counting. Coming up on the five minute point, four, three, two, one, mark. T minus five minutes and counting. We have had a go for APU start. APU start is in work. This is a start sequence. The final chase plane is taken off from Patrick Air Force Base. T minus four minutes, 42 seconds and counting. T minus four minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. Once we get the APU start, we have a total of 12 minutes of hydrazine supply for running the APUs prior to a liftoff. 
everything going very smoothly in this count. The APU start is complete. T minus four minutes, 10 seconds and counting. As preparation for main engine ignition, the main fuel valve heaters have been turned off. T minus three minutes, 57 seconds and counting. The final helium purge on the shuttle main engine has been started in preparation for engine start. The liquid oxygen replenish system has been turned off in preparation for pressurization of the tanks uh, for the launch. T minus three minutes, 35 seconds and counting. The Elevon speed brake and rudder are being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to assure that they'll be ready for use in flight. T minus three minutes, 20 seconds and counting. The shuttle is now on internal power. However, the fuel cells are still receiving their fuels from the ground support system for one more additional minute. Coming up on T minus three minutes, T minus three minutes and counting. The engine gimbal, our movement check is underway to assure they're ready for flight control. T minus two minutes, 52 seconds. The LOX valve on the external tank has been closed and pressurization has begun. After the tank is pressurized, the hold capability is limited to three minutes, 36 seconds. T minus two minutes, 40 seconds and counting. The the fuel cell ground supply of oxygen and hydrogen has been terminated and the vehicle is using its onboard supply. T minus two minutes, 25 seconds and counting. T minus two minutes, 15 seconds. The pressure in the LOX tank is at flight pressure. Coming up on just two minutes away from launch. T minus two minutes, mark and counting. The liquid hydrogen vent valve has been closed and flight pressurization is underway. T minus one minute, 50 seconds and counting. Chuck Hannon has just said smooth sailing baby to astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen. T minus one minute, 35 seconds and counting. T minus one minute, 20 seconds and counting. We can see the purges of the main engines uh, as we prepare for ignition. T minus one minute, 10 seconds and counting. Liquid hydrogen tank is at flight pressure. T minus one minute, mark and counting. The firing system for the sound suppression water will be armed in just a couple seconds from now. It has been armed. T minus 45 seconds and counting. T minus 40 seconds and counting. The development flight instrumentation recorders are on. T minus 35 seconds. We're just a few seconds away from switching to the redundant sense sequencer. T minus 27 seconds. We have gone for redundant set sequencer start. T minus 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15, 14, 13. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. We've gone for main engine start. We have main engine start. The shuttle has cleared the tower.
Houston, you're going throttle up. Roger, go throttle up. Roger, Columbia, on the nice ride. You're lofting a little bit, so it'll probably be slightly high at staging. One minute, 45 seconds, coming up on go, no, go. Columbia, you're in negative seat. Uh, that call up says uh, that uh, Columbia, is the altitude is too high for ejection seat use. Mark. Columbia, you're go for SRB step. Two minutes, four seconds, standing by for SRB step confirmation. <laughs> Roger on the SEP, Columbia. Mark, uh, two minutes, 20 seconds. Confirm solid rocket booster SEP. Check out the initiate. Mark, uh, two minutes, 30 seconds. On, gui on board guidance is converging his program. Columbia is now steering for his precise window in space for main engine cutoff. Mark, two minutes, 40 seconds. Columbia now 39 nautical miles in altitude, uh, 42 nautical miles downrange. Mark, uh, two minutes, uh, 50 seconds. Columbia. Columbia, you're looking a little hot. All your calls will be a little early. Okay. Columbia now has two engine rotor capability. Good here. Mark, Roger. three minutes. Young and Crippen really moving out now. Velocity now reading uh, 6,200 feet per second. Mark, uh, 3 minutes, 15 seconds. Columbia now 51 nautical miles in altitude, 66 nautical miles downrange. Velocity now reading 6,500 feet per second. Mark, uh, 3 minutes, 30 seconds. Columbia now 55 nautical miles in altitude, 78 nautical miles downrange. Mark, uh, three minutes, 40 seconds, uh, standing by for a return status check and mission control by Flight Director Neil Hutchinson. Columbia given a green to continue. Mark, three minutes, 55 seconds, standing by for a press D'Amico, which uh, says Columbia should lose one engine. Columbia, uh, press stand by, press D'Amico. Columbia continues flying forward, coming up on Mark, negative return. Press for Miko. Roger, press for Miko. 